hello guys and welcome again in this video we will try to analyze the forex market prices using python to check if statistics can reveal any correlation between technical indicators and future price direction for this video you don't have to be an expert in trading or programming but it would help if you are familiar with the basic technical indicators like the moving average and the relative strength indicator also known as the rsi you might already know pandas and some descriptive statistics which will definitely help Help. however if you are just here to have a quick idea about machine learning applications in trading then you are also welcome as we will try to keep things simple in this video we will see how to download currency exchange data how to load this data into our python program using pandas and how to start checking the characteristics of our data before we start thinking of fitting a prediction model and jumping right into the complexity and the chaos of predicting the market it's very important to understand the data in every single possible detail. It would make things much easier for the rest of our coding. So we will also have to clean our data from missing values or weird or useless values. Also, starting with a short statistical analysis might reveal patterns or correlations within the data which might come useful if you are trying to guess how to build and test a new trading model or even a new strategy. So in this video, we'll try to answer the question if it is possible to make any predictions based only on technical indicators. So let's get started. So let's get started by downloading our data. I'll go to the ducascopy.com website and uh, visit this page then down here on the right you have the historical data feed simply press on it and it will direct you to this page where you have different options you might download the forex data you can download also bonds and stocks whatever you are interested in i'll just go for the majors and choose the us dollar versus the swiss franc down here you can choose the candlestick time frame i'll go for the hour and the four hours bars for our candlesticks you might as well precise if you are interested in the bidding or the asking price it doesn't matter for our video for this uh, kind of studies here you can specify dates of the period you are interested in and you might as well uh, filter the weekends from the data because during the weekends you have no price movements so it might uh, it might be good to remove those from the data i myself prefer to disable the filters as i will be cleaning these values manually uh, in python then you press the download button it will uh, direct you to a login page you might log in if you have an account if not you can create a free account like a demo account it also gives you the same access to all of this data. So let's start our work by importing pandas spd and using the read underscore csv function to load the downloaded file into our data frame. And in order to check if the data frame is loaded correctly, I will call the tail function, which will show me the last five rows. Of, uh, of the data frame. What is in my data? We have six columns. The first column is the local time, is the date and time of the bar. And then you have the opening price, the high price, the low price, and the closing price of the bar. The last column will give you the volume of the trades as provided by the Cascopy. So this might be a bit different uh, depending on where you downloaded your data from. Then I'm gonna have to do a small cleaning for my data frame. I will check the condition where the volume column is equal to zero and all the rows where this condition is verified, I will take their index and store it in this uh, index zero. And then I'm gonna drop all these rows using the drop function. I wanna erase those from my data frame. Then in order to make sure that these were removed, I will recheck again if the df volume equals zero is valid for any of the rows. If I run this, you can see that I don't have any rows with zero volume. Then I will check if any missing values are in my data frame. And using the isna.sum, I'm gonna sum all these missing values. And I don't have any, so this is good. It's a bit of clean now, we can proceed. 
Next, I will import NumPy as NP and the Pandas Technical Analysis. It's a module specifically dedicated for technical analysis indicators. So it has a list of functions like the average through range, the relative strength indicator, the moving averages, simple moving averages, and so on. If you want to know the list of indicators that is included in this uh, package, you can run the indicators function. And otherwise, if you want to have uh, specific help uh, on a specific function, you can simply run the help function. So I'm going to start adding a few technical indicators to our data frame. I will start with the average true range, calling the function ATR. And as you can see, it takes uh, one parameter here, which is the length. I put it 20. And this means that the ADR will be calculated, taking into account the last 20 bars. Also, I added the RSI, but I didn't put any parameter here. So by default, I think it takes the last 14 bars. Then you have the average. Well, something I called average. In fact, it's the mid price of the bar for each bar. And the three moving averages here First one takes into account the last 40 bars. The second is the 80 bars. And the last one is the 160 bars. It's a common practice in the Forex trading to consider three different uh, moving averages of three different sensitivities, meaning that uh, the 40 bars moving average will be very sensitive to the price movements than one that is less for average sensitivity is the 80 bars moving average the least sensitive will be the 160 bars. Then I'm going to define a new function called getSlope that takes an array of points in parameter and it returns the average slope defined by these points. I will apply this function to the three moving averages, 40 bar moving average, the 80 bars and the 160 bars moving average. And then I'll apply it also to the mid price and to the RSI. So I will have new features in my data frame defining the slopes of the moving averages of the mid price and of the RSI. I'm taking the last six values of each of these features to calculate the slope. I could, of course, increase this as a variable, but six is a good number. I mean, it's enough to guess an average slope and to guess the trend of each of these uh, features. Now we can take a look to our new data frame. So I'm gonna run the tail function. And as you can see at the beginning here, we still have our starting uh, columns about the price, but then we added the ATR, the RSI, the mid price, which I called average, three moving averages, and then the slopes of each of those. So if we have a negative slope, meaning that the RSI, for example, here is heading downwards. If it's a positive slope, we have an increasing RSI. So we also can guess the trend of the technical indicators on top of the trends of the price. Okay, so I think we are ready now to start some analysis. However, the big challenge in this kind of studies is uh, defining your target. What is your target? I've seen a lot of studies trying to estimate or to guess the future average price for the next day or for the next two days. In my opinion, this is too ambitious. It couldn't work. It's much easier to uh, define categories for your uh, target. Meaning if, let's say you want to guess if the price is going to go plus uh, 100 pips or it's going to go in the direction of minus 100 pips. These are two categories. The third one is the one that uh, the price will be remaining the same, let's say within a certain number of bars, will be remaining uh, almost between plus or minus 100 pips. So, so the idea is the following. Let's consider a certain bar, for example, this one here. It closes right here. I'm going to look to the next 10 or 15 or 16 or 20 bars in the future. And I'm going to check what is the trend of the price. Let's say I will fix my take profit to 100 pips. This is minus 100. 
I would like the uh, the price to go down by 100 pips and my stop loss is half of that which is plus 50 pips so I have a take profit stop loss ratio of 2 to 1 meaning each winning trade will make up for two losing trades and then I'm going to check if the price will be roaming around here in the area but then going down and exceeding minus 100 pips without touching my stop loss which is plus 50 pips this for me is a downtrend so I'm going to mark it as a category let's say called 1 on the other hand, if the price will go up to plus 100 pips without touching my stop loss, which is minus 50 pips. So this for me is an uptrend and let's call it category number two. And if the price will be staying between minus 50 and plus 50 pips, I mean not exceeding those two edges, then this is an unclear trend and we're going to call it category zero. So I have defined a new function called my target it takes two parameters the bars up front and the name of your data frame you will also have to set two values one for the pip difference for your take profit I set it to 450 pips and the take profit stop loss ratio which should be around two in our case for our example so basically this function will do the job for us and it will segregate our trends into three different trends downward trend the upward trend and the no clear trend category and then when i'm running uh, this function i will add the results in the my target column and then i will run my head function to check the content of my data frame let's check the results you can see the last column here called my target and we can see that we have our three categories for the three price trends. So in order to do a quick analysis example, we will be plotting the histograms of some of the features we have in our data frame, mainly the volume, the ATR, the RSI, the mid prices, the moving averages, and the calculated slopes. Also the target is included in our analysis this is what we have these are histograms of the obtained values this is the average through range distribution we can see that it goes from 0 to 0 0.01 and then you have the mid prices and the mid price slope and removing averages the rsi it's working properly it's between 0 and 100 and the rsi slope and uh, the my target column actually we can see the frequency of the three categories uh, the category of the upward trend and the downward trend are almost of the same frequency however the no trend or the unclear trend category has a slightly higher uh, frequency this should be taken into account if you are willing to fit this into a machine learning model then you have the slopes and the volume I will not go into a detailed analysis of what these graphs mean. I just wanted to show you how you can have a quick look at your data and check if you have uh, realistic values coming from your data frame or you have some weird outliers uh, that would show up on your histograms. So our data looks clean for the moment. Let's go ahead and check if we can use the RSI alone as a trend indicator. So for this, we're going to define three different data frames, the DF up, down, and DF unclear. And I will filter the RSIs of the uptrends, uptrend bars, and store them into the DF up. Same way I will do for the downtrend bars into the DF down, and the unclear trend bars are going to be stored into the DF underscore unclear. And I will plot the histograms of the three RSIs for the three categories. I'm using 100 bins. It's a bit of transparent so we can see through the, uh, the histograms. Okay, so let's have a look to what we've got. This is our result. And as you can see, the RSIs are symmetrical. And there is no visible difference between the three histograms, meaning that the three trend categories will show the same values with the same probabilities for the RSI. This is a bit deceiving. You cannot guess price trend only relying on the RSI.
but don't get discouraged already you might want to try uh, the same analysis with different technical indicators maybe combining two or three different technical indicators together and check if this would give you an advantage in guessing probable price trend i'm gonna stop here for this video i hope you guys found the information helpful if you have any specific questions you might also drop them down in the comment section and happy coding bye bye